Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Yes, it's finally t-shirt and shorts weather. It went from like 30 degrees to 80 degrees in one day. And what better way to kick off the summer than working on a broken BMW convertible. This is my neighbor's 2006 325CI with the inline six under the hood. And this time, the customer complaint is the battery charge light started coming on. First intermittently, then it was steady. He got it home, by the, by the time he got it home, it was like, he said the radio shut off, the dashboard was a Christmas tree, put it in the garage, try to start it, nothing, completely dead. Um, so I just went down there, I was going to jump start it for him, bring it over here, we got in it, it was kind of a you know slow crank but it fired up no problems battery lights off you made it here so now the plan is to recreate this charging problem do some research on this charging system and see if we're throwing an alternator in this thing or what the heck is going on so uh, let's get a scanner out and maybe some wiring diagrams and see if we can recreate this charging problem all right first thing since I still have Wyatt's Vantage here why not use it? So, if we remember, the multimeter doesn't work. So, let's go to our component tests. We just want DC voltage. And let's, uh, uh, let's see, no. Let's view full screen 12.19. So, it's discharged, but. You know, still in good shape. Start it up. We can even put it here, I guess, so you can see the live voltage readout from the driver's seat. You can kind of see it. Start her up. There's the battery light up there. There goes the vantage. <laughs> well, let's, uh, oil light comes on. We already know that's a bad oil level temperature sensor. No surprise. So let's go to European BMW using our trusty Autel Moxidas DS708. Turn off ignition, wait approximately 10 seconds. Man, this thing's picky. Turn on ignition again. Okay. Uh, read out vehicle data. Alright, we got the right numbers there. I just want to do an auto scan. No, oh, BMW. 107,000 miles almost. It's about time for something to go wrong. I do know that it needs an air injection pump which is like 500 bucks from the dealer and the owner's like screw it I'll live with the check engine light can't blame him auto scan Let's see how many codes we can get out of this thing I don't think you can shut the lights off I don't want to drain this battery if uh, we don't have to so let this run see what's going on Alright, just because I'm impatient, let's just start up, let it run. You can see our voltage there. Get through the glare. 13.8 right now. Pretty steady at 14 volts. We'll continue our scan.
while we're doing the scan, I just jumped on all data to read up on this charging system operation and it doesn't say much. Let's see, uh, electrical connections shaking loose or corroding, the resulting contact resistance can be so high that the battery is no longer charged sufficiently. These conditions can occur intermittently, blah, blah, blah. Visual inspection is not sufficient. Neither is a load pro in this case. Um, particular attention should be paid to the ground connection of the engine and body. It is possible that the fault may be dependent on the load as the engine can move. Da, 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 da. Okay. So, our scan is complete. Let us go to the engine motor electronics read codes oh cool thermal oil level sensor secondary air system and this one BSD generator 27 DA interesting so let's look up 27 DA that might give us a little more information on our uh, diagnosis here. So back to vehicle. Oh man, slow internet of course. Um, where do we look up trouble codes for this thing? I'm not seeing it here. Are you kidding me? Electric drive system, battery. So, if all data doesn't have simple code descriptions, what good is it to pay $155 a month? I'm still paying it even though I don't really work on cars full time anymore, but that is frustrating. I'm gonna poke around here, see if I can find that code description. So I've been on the computer for half an hour and the lack of information for BMW is astounding. You can't get trouble code descriptions, you can barely get wiring diagrams, all data is useless. Uh, I even tried Identifix with uh, you know, Keith. It, it's just hard to get information for this stuff and on BBB Industries I found a couple of hard to read wiring diagrams but better than nothing I guess. Here, how about we zoom in here? <clears throat> there's generator. There's terminal 30, which is the main feed power side. Now, again, if it's an intermittent problem, not worried about that. And here's 15. I guess that's a, uh, a fuse. It's another power supply to the internal controller here. And it talks on another wire with the actual engine computer. And that talks to the instrument cluster, turns on your light. So it's a smart alternator. And if the compu computer says there's a problem with it, then nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, it's going to be your alternator. But how do we, you know, be 100% here? Because, you know, that would go against our whole philosophy of throwing parts. Um, we could drive around, try to recreate the problem. Oh, geez. I mean, we can try unplugging this connector and see if the alternator just puts out the correct voltage in some default mode. We can try a couple things, I guess, and see what happens. So the alternator is down there. You can see the big red wire coming up, and then there's one other connector that I'm just going to try to unplug for lack of a better thing to do. You barely get your hand kind of in here under this air intake hose. 
super hard to reach. We'll press the little clippy with our pry bar. Hopefully it doesn't snap off. Maybe we need two pry bars. You can reach in with this one, push the pin, reach in with this one, move the connector. What a pain in the butt. See what I'm doing here. Okay, we're off. There's the there's the connector. And it looks like a was it a two pin? Actually just one just one pin in there. I don't know why they made it a two pin connector for a one pin connection. So, I don't know if there's anything else going to it. Back to our wiring diagram. This is just one of the two. The only other wiring diagram is this guy here. And it just says alternator, battery plus cable, and DBSD. Violet wire going right to the computer. That's it. So let's start it up with that you know connector unplugged. I think we have this system. So just a one pin connector on that you know small gauge wire. See what happens. All right. Fire up the Vantage again. So why, if you're watching, this is how you get to the full screen. Bam, backlight, everything you need. Start this sucker up. Got 13.8 volts, 13.9. Battery light is not on. That thing unplugged, it's ridiculous. There's our oil light. Hey, we take it for a spin. Let's do that. We can still monitor our battery voltage through the scanner. So. Let's erase the codes. Read codes. There you go, I guess didn't erase them. Battery voltage. There. Thirteen point four. Let's go take it for a spin. <clears throat> so I scanned for codes again, and check this out. Now we have a two eight one D BSD generator signal, and a two eight one C bit serial data interface BSD signal. So that already tells me that you guys can. So basically unhooking that one you know, single wire communication from the alternator gave us new codes. So that tells me right there that that wire is fine. You know, the computer sees that the alternator is now unplugged, but before it was just setting an alternator fault. Now it would be really nice to have a code setting criteria for that 27, I think DA code because again you know we're not worried about this communication wire but still was it an alternator fault or or is it something else like you know maybe a poor connection there's you know the alternator only has three connections the big power wire going to the battery a ground which is just bolted to the engine block and then that lin wire and at this point we're not worried about the communication wire 
so it seems like at this point it's an internal alternator problem I don't really see what else it could be now Keith was saying that it could be a smart battery sensor issue in the back and let's take a visual inspection of that hold on so here's the battery and here's our smart whatever battery sensor you can see there's little wires coming off the back for the sensor and the battery itself oh man I don't know if there's a date code on there when this thing was installed with the scanner I you know can't read any battery information I think this thing has to be like registered with the car I don't know if that shows anything at all. <laughs> this is insufficiently charged. I don't see any green or yellow or whatever in there. But it's hard to say how old this thing is. Because Keith said that potentially a bad battery, you know, there isn't, if it's not accepting current or something, then the system might think that the alternator is not putting out. It, it's just, you know, too many variables. So, I think what we should do at this point is, since we know that our communication wire is fine, actually run the car and see if we can make this thing act up. Everything's plugged in and monitor our battery voltage. If our light comes on and our battery voltage starts dropping, I want to keep the car running, unplug that communication wire and see if the voltage comes up or if it's an internal alternator fault you won't even run in the you know default mode and then we can call the alternator and you know get this thing fixed well we drove around for 10 miles no issues didn't skip a beat we're at 13.5 volts on the scanner so you know at this point what are the options 99% sure that the alternator is intermittently, you know, crapping out. We give the car back to the customer, see if he, he can recreate it. Uh, give him an estimate on an alternator, but cases like this, you know, you can't be 100% sure, which kind of sucks. So, with that, uh, I guess, I don't know. I don't know how to close out this video. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I get any other information, we'll do a part two. But uh, with that, thanks a lot for watching, and stay away from BMWs. All right, have a good night. Bye-bye. So BMW follow-up. It's the next day. The owner took it to town. Same thing happened. He barely made it home. Right now, the battery is at 11.4 volts. I had to jump start it to get it started and well let's start from uh, where it was before with this plug connected on the back of the alternator the, the lin wire sorry I'm tipping with my phone didn't have my camera handy here's what it does let's see if we can start this guy up no no bones alright we got the NOCO connected Fire right up. No problems. So look, the radio works right now, right? We'll unhook this guy. Look at our voltage. Ten point one and dropping. There you go, now it comes back up. It's charging, 13.4, 13.5, boom. 11 point, you know, it, it's like oscillating. You can hear the engine strain when the alternator does kick on. Ooh, 9.8, 9.7, it's not looking good. Whatever's gonna kick on again. Oh man, the car's ready to die here.
So the last check we have to do is disconnect that LIN wire from the alternator, the short, uh, the small gauge. And if the alternator kicks back on, it's a control problem. If it doesn't, it's an alternator problem because last night we saw it was charging steady at 14 with that wire unplugged. So this alternator should have like a limp home default mode. And right now it's definitely not there. Shut this guy off. Oh, you saw the battery light was on too. So it's, it's smart. So what I'm going to do now is disconnect. I can get my hand in here again. Oh, that's hot. I'm not used to taping with the phone. Right down there is the connector. There we go. So it's unplugged. Jump start this sucker again. Turn this guy on. No, not the light. Stop it. There we go. I should start right up. There we go. Sweet. Radio's on, everything's happy. Turn this guy off, unhook the NOCO, and let's go back to 10.6, 10.4, 10.3, dropping fast. And without that little wire connector, our battery light is actually not on. So it's definitely an alternator fault, no question about it. Not charging at all. Anyways. That's enough evidence for me to call the alternator. Um, I should be putting out 14 volts even with that wire disconnected. It's toast, so we'll uh, bring it back if we actually do the repair. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed the follow-up. Thanks.